Web 3.0 holds a promise to revolutionize every single aspect of our online lives. Moving towards a free web that's focused on privacy, transparency, and open access, we've already made great progress towards this future. Many people undeniably see the potential in this space, but it has its fair share of problems. And with these problems, the doubt creeps in, and people say things like, Okay, well, that's great, but we already have all these awesome Web 2.0 applications that are really fast that everybody uses. You know, why would they make the switch to Web 3.0? Well, in this video, I want to talk about a major development that could cause lots of people to do exactly that. Make the switch from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 because this could provide a benefit that's actually better than Web 2.0 alternatives and therefore rapidly usher in the adoption of Web 3.0 technology. This is something you have to understand if you're trying to stay two steps ahead in this space, so you don't want to miss this. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at dappiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this big development coming down the pike in the Web 3.0 space that could cause a lot of people to make the switch over to this technology. So first, let's start by looking at the values of blockchain. You know, blockchains essentially provide permissionlessness. Basically, anybody can use the applications without asking anybody. You know, they're trustless. Basically, you can see how the code works and audit it. They're immutable, so the code can't change. And then finally, there's censorship resistance, so nobody can take them down. And now some people will say, okay, that's great for things like cryptocurrency and NFTs and different decentralized finance applications or DeFi, which is ultimately really a fringe niche sector of the entire technical landscape in the first place. Really, only a tiny fraction of the global population even uses this stuff now. And of course, it could get bigger, and it probably will. But what about everybody who uses the internet? Okay, we're talking about every Everybody who just accesses a website for any purpose. You know, while you might only know a handful of people who do things like trade stocks and maybe those people could switch over to DeFi, well, pretty much everybody uses a website. And what if we could use Web 3.0 technology to actually make websites better? Imagine how many people that could get on board. If you can make a better, faster, cheaper Web 3.0 alternative to the Web 2.0 experience, that could legitimately cut into the Web 2.0 market share and really move the needle and tip the scales in favor of Web 3.0. So let's talk about how that can happen. Well, this all has to really do with how we create user interfaces in the Web 3.0 space and how this could dramatically change in the coming future and be better than Web 2.0 alternatives. So right now, like I said before, most of Web 3.0 is focused on cryptocurrencies and NFTs or DeFi. Okay, and that really has to do with the blockchain side of things and the smart contracts or the programs that run on those blockchains. So let's take a really popular Web 3.0 use case, just swapping cryptocurrencies. It's a really simple DeFi application like Uniswap, for example. You go to uniswap.org, uh, okay, and you visit the swap page. You connect your MetaMask wallet, and then you enter in the cryptocurrency you want to buy and sell, and you click swap. And then you're on this website, and this website talks to the blockchain. Now, everything on the back end is, you know, really decentralized in this way, but the front end is not so much. Okay, so this website right here that I'm looking at, Uniswap.org, this is basically just sitting on a centralized web server, okay? Now, full disclosure, Uniswap does have a decentralized alternative, but most people are accessing this through a centralized web server, mostly to get the performance benefits and the streamlined user experience of just using DNS in their browser like this so that it works like other websites. And they don't really care about the decentralization in this regard. They just know it works. But there's some major problems with a centralized hosting alternative like this. What if your hosting provider says, hey, you know, we don't want you on our platform. They could completely deplatform you. And that would completely undermine the values I was talking about before, like censorship resistance. Or what if you got on a blacklist for a website like this? They could prevent you from accessing it. So that would cut into permissionlessness. Or Uniswap could do something like decide to make their front end completely closed source. And therefore, it's not as trustless anymore. You don't know how it works. Now, it's probably not going to happen, but theoretically, it could. And then finally, this website could be updated at any time. And maybe some type of malicious code could get injected, whether it's on purpose or by accident. And again, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Uniswap, but it could. And really, I'm using Uniswap as an example, but you can apply this to any different Web 3.0 applications that are less trustworthy and these problems remain a risk. Now, you can get around some of these problems by using an alternative, a distributed file storage system like IPFS, for example. So I've talked about IPFS a lot on my channel. It's basically a way to put your files on a distributed system. Okay, it works kind of like a blockchain, but not really. You could also use alternatives like Filecoin or Arweave. But if you've used any of this stuff as a developer, Okay, you notice that there are some things that are left to be desired. It's really not as fast and performant as some of the Web 2.0 alternatives. And that's why a lot of people are just going with Web 2.0 front ends because they're blazing fast. You can use things like content delivery networks to optimize the page delivery across the globe. And I've been 100% honest, a lot of the Web 2.0 front ends are just, just better. And for that reason, many developers and companies 
you know, decide to put their front ends on hosting services like AWS, Google Cloud Platform, Netlify, or something like that. But what if you didn't have to do that, okay? What if you could generate a front end that had a web 2.0 experience or even better, okay, that still had the values of permissionless, trustlessness, immutable, and censorship resistant? Okay, what if you could have your cake and eat it too? You could get the best of the web 3.0 world and the best of the web 2.0 world, and maybe even better than web 2.0 world, particularly for developers and companies who are hosting their applications. Let me explain. That's the really critical part. Okay, so you know, centralized hosting companies are notorious for being expensive, especially over time as you continue to grow your applications. Okay, so let me explain. If they provide a huge value. I'm not saying they're bad. Okay, but let's talk about the competitive market forces here. Um, they basically like to create your applications really fast with something like Netlify or if you're using AWS or like Google Cloud Platform, you can configure things to your heart's content. But the problem is as you grow and scale, the prices are just going to start going up. All right, at some point, those prices get really big and you're like, oh my gosh, why am I paying all this money? And they have massive leverage in this case because once you've got an app working, it's tuned in, they know that it's very expensive in terms of developer time to migrate from one hosting platform to a different one. And this friction really keeps you locked in to using their platform and the, you know, switching costs are high and therefore they're just going to keep charging high prices because they can't. And so what if you could actually create a web 3.0 alternative that was cheaper for developers and companies to use than these centralized hosting platforms that gave you all the benefits of web 3.0 was just as fast, if not faster than web 2.0 and cheaper for the companies to use, making them more profitable. Imagine how many people that could get on board who aren't even using Web 3.0 right now and get them to switch over to Web 3.0 and also in reverse put competitive pressure back on Web 2.0 to compete on price. Well, that's the exact vision of what Fleek is working on. Okay, so full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video of any kind. They didn't even contact me to talk about this. I'm not being paid to say anything about Fleek. I just think what they're working on is really cool and I want to make a video about it to share it with you all because this has such massive potential. Now, you might have seen me talk about Fleek before on this channel, or if you've done the Blockchain Bootcamp or any of my Mastery series. I already use Fleek a lot because they are a hosting provider, a lot like Netlify, okay? And it's really easy to basically just like deploy your front end to a website like GitHub where you host it, and then just like with a few click of a buttons, connect your GitHub profile to Fleek, and then they can spin you up a website live on the web really fast. And what's even cool is you can also just like with a few clicks of a button, deploy your website to IPFS so that you have a decentralized Web 3.0 alternative. But again, you're still at the mercy of the delivery speeds of IPFS, okay, which can kind of be a little slow and it's not always the best user experience for the end user. But Fleek is working on something in-house that's aiming to fix that problem with the Fleek network. Well, essentially, it is a decentralized content delivery network that's going to let you host front ends in a decentralized way where the user experience is as good as Web 2.0, if not better than Web 2.0, and it is cheaper for developers and companies to put their applications on this, which is massive competitive pressure for the Web 2.0 space. And it is going to embody all these different values of the Web 3.0 space, like trustlessness, transparency, censorship resistance, and immutability that I was talking about before. It's potentially sort of the holy grail of all the best qualities that could be a real game changer for this space. And no, they're not just like spinning up their own blockchain. This is actually going to piggyback off of the Ethereum network and real legit blockchain infrastructure that heavyweight players are already using in this space. All right, so look, look at how that's going to work. So right now, Fleek, you know, this is the standard version that you're using today if you've done any of my tutorials. As it is, you know, it's just hosting things on a Web 2.0 platform, but they're moving towards their own Web 3.0 platform called the Fleet Network. So really under the hood, what is it? Well, it's a decentralized content delivery network, okay? So it, it's going to work a lot like other content delivery networks or CDNs that you might have used in the past. So, you know, Cloudflare is a really good one that comes to mind. Okay, this is a Web 2.0 platform. And Cloudflare has been actually pretty big in the Web 3.0 space. They've been very collaborative but they've also, you know, done things like prevent access to different front ends like Tornado Cash. They're not completely censorship resistant in that way. But that is the aim of the Fleek Network. So if you're not familiar with the content delivery network, how it works, basically, let's say you have a web server, okay, that's located in the United States. Uh, but then you have people all across the world trying to access your website. Okay, let's say somebody from, you know, Japan. All right, there's a long way to travel between the United States and Japan. And so what you do is you use a content delivery network where you have all these different caching points all across the globe. So when someone in Japan requests your website in the United States, they request from a location that's slightly closer or a lot closer in this case 
and it just delivers the stuff faster. That's why you have these worldwide web that's really fast for anybody to use no matter where they are. And what Fleek is doing is basically creating a decentralized content delivery network where you can upload your application into multiple places across the entire world and get the same type of web 2.0 user experience with web 3.0. That's one reason you don't have this IPFS is you don't really have this like content delivery network caching mechanism. You're always just requesting stuff directly from the IPFS network itself. So it's super slow, but this is gonna be much faster, much more performant, just like web 2.0. And as it stands from my latest readings, you know, the dev network for this really is about as fast as Cloudflare is right now. And the aim is to actually get it faster than what Cloudflare currently provides when they move to mainnet. And so how it's going to provide this value, you can see it's on the Fleek network website, is it's just going to have nodes that you can run. It'll be decentralized in that way. It's not just going to be Fleek operating the nodes. You know, anybody can run it. And then these servers or nodes can get run all across the globe, create this network that won't be taken down. In in addition to this, it's actually going to use blockchains underneath to help secure the network. And no, they're not just spinning up their own blockchain with an excuse to create a new cryptocurrency. They're actually going to piggyback on top of the Ethereum network itself and use existing blockchain infrastructure that's more in line with the ESOS or where this space is headed. It it really is embodying the Web 3.0 values that the industry is moving toward. And that's a big legitimizer in my view. Now, that being said, my understanding is that there will be some type of layer two like experience here and they could actually create a cryptocurrency with us in the future in fact that's what their intent shows here on the fleek.network website Uh, having token rewards adopting a shared economy that lets anyone participate with the bandwidth and computation in the fleek network the protocol token so it looks like there will be some token incentives here and that makes sense because at some point you have to incentivize people to run these networks and get paid to do it and that's how they plan to do it but not necessarily just spinning up their own blockchain that requires its own massive security level they're going to take the security from ethereum and then have the second layer on top and if they can pull this off to create a user experience for the end user that rivals web 2.0 okay that gives us all these other values of Web 3.0, like censorship, resistance, trustlessness, permissionlessness, and transparency, and makes it cheaper for developers to host their applications rather than the Web 2.0, and can get the incentives right for decentralized actors to run this infrastructure, then this all could be a massive game changer that could accelerate the adoption of Web 3.0 really fast, even for people who aren't using things like cryptocurrencies, NFTs, or decentralized finance, right? This is a way that a er- normal average Joe user could just be going using the website and not even realize that there's blockchains running behind the hood. They don't need a MetaMask wallet to use this. It works just like the web works now, but you have this robust decentralized layer underneath it. And if they can crack this, that is a massive game changer in my view. All right, so if you're a developer and you want to start getting your hands dirty with this, of course, you can go to the fleek.network website and you can do a couple things. You know, you can read the white paper to dig into more of the details uh, what I was talking about in this video today. Uh, it's pretty long. It's about 12 pages, uh, but you can dig into more of the dirty details there. If you want to start working with the technology, okay, they've got a way for you to basically uh, get the software in your computer. You can just do it from your terminal by uh, running the curl command and getting the Fleek uh, network URL here you know, with Bash. And then you can go through the steps to run a node if you want to and just see what that's like and what the requirements are on your computer. Okay, they got a pretty simple... Uh, you know, set up script here, okay? And, you know, this could be something to do in your spare time if you're looking for a future airdrop. Now, kid, I don't have any inside information on this. Um, I'm not in contact with anybody right now at the Fleek Network, but, you know, it looks like there is going to be a Fleek token in the future, and no doubt there's going to be incentives for people who are running nodes. There's no guarantee, but I'm just connecting the dots here that either they're going to distribute the token based on running the infrastructure or airdrop it in some way or a combination of both. And you're way more likely to get an airdrop by being an early participator and running the infrastructure. So again, no guarantee here, but if you got some extra time, may not be a bad idea to look into running a Fleek node. All right, so that's an overview of what Fleek is doing with Fleek Network, how this could be a massive game changer for moving from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. that can get a lot of people on board, could be a huge tipping point. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps these videos out. Some people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like any courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I should become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. Okay. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become a real, real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.